Hi, I'm Natsal, and for the last two-ish months, I've been photoshopping myself into my Bumble Matches pictures and sending it to them, and then showing you guys on TikTok. I show you a super fast version on TikTok, but if you're here on YouTube, it's because you want to see the full process. So here's the tutorial. I'm using Adobe Photoshop. I use Photoshop for every single one of my videos. We have our layers over here on our right and our tools on our left and our canvas in the middle. I chose this guy because he's playing pool and I think it would be very funny to do the classic trope of a guy teaching a girl how to play pool. I always take a million pictures of myself and I bring my favorites into Photoshop um, to test them out to see what looks best with his picture. Photoshop has this cool AI feature where we just come down here and click remove background. And that'll roughly get rid of our background. You know, it deleted a little too much, but that can always be fixed. So I'm gonna do that for all of these. And since I am roughly standing in the same position for all of these, I'm going to select them all, transform, and get myself like approximately where I would be. And honestly, I don't think that I will need to change the size of myself that much. This looks pretty good. Yay! <laughs> and the lighting. Good job, Madeline. That, I think I'm facing too far out in the wrong direction, so delete. I'm angled too much in the wrong direction there. Let's go with the one that shows my face more because it'll make for a better video. And I guess the point is that like he sees what we could look like together. Let's go to our layer mask and add back in the rest of my faux pool stick. Yeah, let me just clean up this image of myself before we even get into anything else. So whenever a layer mask is created, you can use the lasso tool to select part of the image and fill it with black to remove it. And then if at a later point you want to bring some of that image back in, like I do right here, you can just select it and fill it with white. So let's get started on the TikTok. Control T to transform, and I'm just gonna drag myself in from the bottom. Nice, funny. Now I want to get my size and position just right. But honestly, my perspective that I took this photo like looks pretty decent. I technically, if his feet were down there, my feet would be much lower. Before I do anything else, I want to get my color correct. So over here, we have this half circle where you can create an adjustment layer. And I'm gonna start with color balance because I'm looking too yellow, I think. Option command G will make it so the layer only goes to the layer below so that I'm not adjusting the color of the entire image. And let's make it a little more blue, a little more pink, a little more red. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to duplicate his layer and remove background on his layer. Drag that above all these layers that I am in um, so that I can grab his hand from here. Because what I am wanting to do is put his hand on my waist. Ooh, but his hand is red on my boob. We don't want that. <laughs> we can see his watch behind me, so let's hide. 
the Madeline layer for a moment, hide the arm layer, go to the background and remove his hand entirely. So using the lasso tool, you can circle anything you want and then type in what you want the generative AI to generate in place of it. Click generate and then it gives you three options. So it's removed his hand. This one looks the best. Now we have a floating pool cue, which actually is great because I'm going to take that pool cue in the future. So I'm going to merge that with the background. Select this pool cue. Duplicate it. Pool stick. You want to select it and remove it. Select what you want. Click generative fill. Remove. Generate. One, two, three. Great, let's add me back in. How would his, would his hand be under my arm, my arm? Yeah, okay, his hand would be under my arm. So let's get rid of. So we'll go back into his layer mask and use the paintbrush to remove some of that. We'll stick back in, use the magnetic lasso to select just the pool stick. So then now, I want to transform. Let's give that to me because I didn't have a real pool stick. Oh my gosh, it's the perfect size. Uh, amazing. Later, I'll go in and clean up all the, you know, jagged edges. But for now, let's get into integrating me into this image further. <sighs> Generative Phil hates me because apparently putting a guy's hand on a girl's waist violates guidelines. So I like to use phrases like holding and <laughs> hugging, and maybe it, you know, won't recognize what's going on here, even though this is not like dirty. Here we go. It's holding something. Let's see. Let's see if we could just do hand on back. None of these work for me, so I'm just going to merge them because now we have like part of a thumb and I added a layer mask onto that layer. So then I can just like manually remove some stuff to like kind of make it look like his hand is on my back. I don't know. Okay, that's not so bad. Let's see if it will create some shadows in here. Otherwise I will just manually create some shadows myself. But I like to use generative AI really is like a cheat code. Uh, you know, it's a lot less work than doing it yourself. Look at that. Okay, so then anything that looks weird, like how my jeans look very cartoonish, I just select the layer mask, remove, and paint it out. So then, okay, we still have that shadow of me on him, but I can just paint out the part that looks odd and paint back in like my real pants and then see if I can generate it one more time. Okay, these lights are too bright on my bod. So I'm going to create a layer with the adjustment brush and scale down that paintbrush size and now this will just paint brightness onto wherever I 
choose. It automatically has really high brightness, so let's just put it back to zero and then lower it a little bit. So now I'm just literally painting shadows into areas. And I wanna do another one and create more of a shadow onto the guy. When you're really close to someone, the shadow is shorter and much darker than these like big, long cast shadows that we have. But this shadow is looking a little too hard. So I'm gonna soften up that brush and remove along the edges. Voila. My butt looks huge in this. <laughs> I don't even know if that's my real butt anymore or if that's my AI generated butt. <laughs> I basically just go around and use generative fill where I can as my little shortcut. I mean, and I say when I can because it blocks me half the time. And then if it doesn't work, like I'm getting blocked a lot or I don't like what the generations look like, I go in and do manual Photoshop work, which I can do, it's just a lot more tedious. <laughs> and I love cheating, so. <laughs> okay, so now that's gonna keep blocking that. So let's go back to the Madeline layer. We're gonna add a layer mask and select those little bits that I have been seeing and edit them out. I really just want to mask out the parts of my image that are throwing things off. And, you know, pasting back in the few hairs or the parts of my body that will actually look realistic. You know, right here, there's clearly a gray outline around my face. We wanna get rid of that. I'm cut out pretty well. I think what I want to do, I wanna make the pool table longer because I'm obviously shooting into like a wall, which I guess that doesn't really matter. But I think this will work better. Uh... Since that didn't do what I had pictured in my head, I'm just going to scooch it down like that. You can move around these images that generative fill creates. So I can slide it down and then compensate for the pieces that look broken by using generative fill again. I wanna remove all these balls in the background and make it look like his hand is guiding my other hand. Let's remove his arm entirely so then later I can generate his hand onto my hand. This worked okay, but like my arm looks crazy lumpy. <laughs> uh, there, there. So really what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to clear the area of the pool table so that I can go in and start manually adding my own shadows because the depth perception is very off here. But with all of those balls in the background, I was not going to be able to uh, create a realistic scene. I'm getting blocked by guidelines, so I like to go up to the remove tool. The remove tool is not as accurate as generative fill, but when generative fill blocks my attempts so many times, I just like to go in and use the remove tool because it doesn't have that kind of caution. Uh, the remove tool does whatever it wants, but also is not going to generate like, you know, you don't ask the remove tool to generate something. It just predicts what is needed. Doesn't have to think as hard, you know? I feel like my body is too far away from the pool table. I think I'm gonna need to bend our bodies together more over the pool table. So what I like to do in times like these, because I've just created this whole background, but like all of these images are overlapping with each other. So I select all of my layers. I click Command J, which duplicates it all. Then Command E, 
merges them all. This is what we call a stamp layer. And with this stamp layer, I can duplicate it and remove background. So now we're the only ones here. I have this other stamp layer underneath us. So I can go select us, remove us completely from this image. Okay, so now it's like we're puppets on a blank background, you see? I'm gonna add a lot of this background back in. I can use Puppet Warp, yay! My fave. Edit, Puppet Warp, and now I can just put pins on our bodies where I want our bodies to tilt. We wanna anchor our legs down there. Um, let's tilt at his head. Works for me. What I like to do is I like to take pieces of the original image and kind of collage it into what I believe the image should look like. And then I will use the AI on top of that to generate what I want, um, just to kind of give the AI some inspiration, you know? I like to give these guys like big muscular arms to, you know, feed their egos. Oh, now his arm looks way too big. <laughs> Great. Grab that sleeve ornament. Let's lower that brightness contrast. Generative fill just like hates bodies. <laughs> <laughs> generate animals, generate objects. Just using it on people is like the most frustrating task, which is why these edits take so long for me. What are you doing? What's wrong with this? Okay, so instead of using generative fill more, I'm going to select my arm as smoothly as I can. Okay, so now I have the area where my arm is selected, create a new layer, and I'm gonna use the clone stamp, which is what we did before generative fill is <laughs> we would use the clone stamp, get a nice little selection, and butt that right up against my arm so then we no longer have this like weird blurriness and it looks a little more crisp. Nice, aw, so cute. We are having so much fun. Oh my gosh, my butt looks huge. Let me just see if I can just make it smaller. <laughs> There. That's a little better. Beautiful. I love this. Before. After. It's so cute. I love it. I really like it. <laughs> okay, let's send it to him. This actually turned out pretty good considering how hard I thought it was going to be. So let's send him a picture. <laughs> It looks so good, actually. Uh, let's send this pic. Send. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> we look like we are having so much fun. I love it. Maybe he can teach me one day. <laughs> These edits are never easy, but they always turn out pretty cool. Um, so I'm happy, I like how this looks. It is, you know, a little off, but I think if you just glanced at the photo, you would think nothing of it. It's not bad, I hope you learned something. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time, bye.